What is a sustainable city? I'm still asking myself that question. Let me see if I can provide some partial answers. So I live in Los Angeles. Is Los Angeles a sustainable city? The way my colleagues at UCLA's Institute of the Environment would approach this question is that they would make a, an input-output matrix. So for any city in any year, they might collect data on a per capita basis of how much water, electricity, food, chemicals, fuel, land, all the inputs used in every part of city life, they would want to make a big matrix of all these different things. And these would be the inputs consumed by households and firms in the city. They then would have a matrix of outputs, environmentally related outputs, how much carbon dioxide emissions the city's residents and firms created, how much local air pollution, local water pollution, waste production, poop, uh, all of these things stacked up in a vector. They would label a city as sustainable if it has low input requirements, that it uses relatively little water, electricity, food, chemicals, and if it creates, a, as a byproduct of whatever goes on in that city, low pollution, measured in gr greenhouse gas emissions, local air pollution, water pollution. And this essentially is the ecological footprint approach. It, it doesn't really ask what productive activities people are engaged in in cities. It's sort of an accounting approach for resources used and uh, and waste spit out in sort of a circular flows argument back from old Keynesian days. Notice also that there's no prices in any of this stuff. Of th there's, no, there's no discussion in this literature of how the price of water, price of electricity mediates price of food, how this mediates what resources are used and, and whether there's carbon taxes or not uh, is not discussed for its role those factors would play in determining how much waste is produced. So there's no counterfactuals here. There's sort of the implicit assumption that these are laws of physics. While an economist believes that demand curves slope down, and if electricity prices were higher, or if there was a carbon tax, we would see the citizens of Los Angeles engaging in different activities so that you'd observe a different input-output matrix. I think my environmentalist colleagues would counter that what they're creating is sort of a baseline to know if we do introduce certain treatments like a carbon tax, what their consequences would be for the input-output matrix. Economists always think a little differently. And when we think about urban sustainability, we care very much about revealed preference. We focused on local quality of life. Are young people moving to the city? Are incumbents who live in that city moving out? Are home prices high in that city relative to other cities? These are our three big tests for whether quality of life is good in that city. So in a city such as Detroit, I don't see young people moving to it. I see people moving out, and I see home prices very low. This yells out to an economist that this is an unsustainable city, that, that economic activity is, is collapsing in that city. And so our definition of sustainability focuses both on economic opportunities and quality of life, and the environment factors into this. If, if a city's water pollution or air pollution is real bad, then people will vote with their feet and move away, or, they will, or rents will be and home prices will be very low in that city. And so prices will adjust, signaling to an economist both the m migration patterns and real estate prices. In high quality of life cities, people will be moving to it, and home prices will be high. In, the converse is also true. In low quality of life cities, people will be moving away and real estate prices will be low and falling in those cities. And that's evidence to us of sustainability, of how we measure it. So in the sustainable city, for us to judge a city as sustainable, we are looking at factors such as, is crime falling? Is air quality getting better? Now, these are local quality of life factors. I recognize that several environmental factors, such as greenhouse gas emissions, are global. A city like Las Vegas could have great quality of life because it is electrified all day and creating greenhouse gas emissions and using all sorts of water to have green golf courses in the middle uh, of a desert. So it is important to track greenhouse gas emissions. 
A, and the typical resident will ignore that in deciding whether Las Vegas is a great place to live. That's an externality. There's also natural resource consumption. Where does a city's water come from and what becomes of that city's garbage? These are issues that arise when thinking about a, a city, a city's residents and firms, there are local impacts and there are regional and global impacts from the economic activity that takes place there. Now, I would say that competition, a theme that differentiates economists from non-economists, is that competition between cities will foster overall urban sustainability. If Las Vegas as a desert area has, has ample water, why is that? What property right or market has provided so much water to the people of Los Angeles, of Las Vegas or Los Angeles, if that's truly an unsustainable path? I think uh, what you would find is, is there must be some pricing incentive sending the wrong incentive to the people in Las Vegas or Los Angeles. Some water price must be too low. In Los Angeles, water is priced extremely low relative to, to, to the drought conditions we face. And so that's an issue of resource pricing playing a key role in sustainability. That if Los Angeles or Las Vegas faced higher water prices, you would see a whole bunch of intuitive adaptation patterns, ripping out green grass, using less water outside, and the sustainability measured by the environmentalist criteria of resource consumption would improve very much as a direct consequence of the law of demand. Final point for today. When we think about whether a city such as Las Vegas or London is sustainable, you got to track three things, local quality of life, global environmental impacts like greenhouse gas emissions, and natural resource consumption. With these three factors, do we weight all of them equally with weights of a third, a third, or a third? Which of these do we prioritize? This really depends on your priorities. If you are a climate change uh, expert, you might care most about issue number two. While if you care most about local quality of life impacts, you might prioritize that. And so the sustainable city, there's really two issues. We're both refining how we measure this. The environmentalists and economists are debating what's the definition. And over time, these cities are making different choices over, the, the, the governments of these cities are making different choices over how they price scarce resources like water and electricity. And this affects very much the choices of firms and households within those cities. And this, in turn, when you aggregate that up, determines the overall sustainability based on the criteria that environmentalists focus on in that input-output matrix we started with.